Hey, ooh, I just realized I'm kind of chopping off my head on this video. Let me see if I can fix it. Hold on. How's it going? How was your weekend? Arr, I have my thing on a tripod, so I think that's better. All right, so uh, my name's Venice. Hi, if you and I don't know each other. Uh, by training, I'm actually a nutritionist. By training, I'm also a life coach. So I've been, gosh, I think I got my degree in nutrition 20 years ago. Ah! I feel really old, guys. <clears throat> and my first job out of college, actually, I worked with a medical doctor. And I was the person who put people on nutrition programs for people who were sick, people who wanted to lose weight. So I had a, a lot of experience in that area. One of the things that I loved to do in my past life as a uh, nutritionist was I loved teaching people how to cook. So I have done my fair share of teaching cooking lessons, my friend. So this is something, uh, if you followed me, I haven't really done a lot of it, but I'm about to get started in 2020. You know why? Because it's a really important area of being healthy. So. With that, I have a question for you. I'm going to share with you in a moment my easiest hack for cooking chicken. <laughs> in one minute. But before I do, I'm opening this uh, bottle here. I want you to share with me, if you're tuning in, what is your number one, kind of where you are in your journey right now? What are you concerned about in your health or nutrition? because I wanna take your comments and you know, look at them and see how I can serve you, how I can give you tips, how I can support you where you are at in your current, um, just kind of part of your health journey, okay? It may be uh, you're interested in losing weight. It may be, um, not you know, I'm, I just want meal ideas. Uh, if you're a vegetarian, let me know. That would definitely be something I'd be interested to know. Um, if you struggle with inflammation and you're looking for recipes that are going to help decrease inflammation in the body, let me know, okay? So basically every Sunday I'm going to be on live and I'm going to do one easy recipe and I'm going to actually cook. I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to give you a simple tip, okay? But starting next week, I will be doing that. If I'm out of town, because sometimes I travel, I will be um, doing dropping a video on my page. Why Sundays? Because this is actually the day I cook. Like literally after this video, I'm about to do my cooking for the week. So I'm just trying to have things be very organic to my own life. <laughs> that makes sense. So I love cooking Sunday afternoon. It's been a ritual for me. So. That's kind of something you can expect. The other thing I will do is also um, every week, I'm going to have a recipe uh, for the food, the food item that I'm gonna cook so I can provide that to you, okay? So that's my little intro. Um, the, I have kind of invented this cooking style that I have and I, got, I have to give kudos to my best friend who helped me create it. I call it freestyle cooking. What is freestyle cooking? Um, basically, my favorite thing to do is go and make stuff up. Like, I love making up recipes. <laughs> and I'm like really, really good at just making up recipes. So, you know, Donna was like, it's freestyle cooking, Venice. That's what you do. It's like freestyle, right? So uh, every recipe will be one of my freestyle recipes that I've either made up. Or the other thing is I don't like to use a bazillion ingredients. Like if I see a a recipe and it has like 10 ingredients you've lost me <laughs> so I'm all about like how can I like cook healthy but I don't want to be using a bazillion ingredients so I start getting very like distracted if I have to use a lot of ingredients in a recipe just saying that's me okay um so be sure to let me know what your interest is in health and nutrition right now. What are your health goals? Because I'm going to read your comments and I'm going to really look at them and look at how I can um, kind of craft my content to serve you and where you are. Okay. So here's my easy hack. <clears throat> so let's talk about chicken. 
okay? One of my easy tips to like having chicken have various flavors is I will use, instead of like a rub, you know you can go to a grocery store and buy a rub. Um, I don't wanna spend a ton of money on, on food if I can avoid it. If I'm going to spend money, I'm going to spend more money on my actual meat versus like on spices, okay? For myself, I'm a huge advocate of buying um, like free range chicken, chicken that doesn't have any hormones or antibiotics in it. And that's been uh, for me something I've done for a very long time, okay? So I to get do like a workaround for buying rubs, I will use a salad dressing to marinate my chicken. Okay, so here are some of my personal salad dressings that I use, and this is the one that I'm actually going to use tonight to marinate my chicken because I'm gonna cook as soon as this live is over, okay? <clears throat> this is Annie's, and um, I'm not actually totally um, hardcore partial to the brand I use. I will tell you, years ago, I was totally everything organic, everything, like I used to be definitely on the total like extreme side of my food items. I'm not there anymore. At this point in my life, what I'm looking for is food that tastes great, uh, food that is healthy, but I'm. this is where I am in my journey. I just don't wanna go to extremes because I've lived in a lot of extremes nutrition-wise for many years. So I, you know, I'm not, not gonna stress over using a non-organic salad dressing, if that makes sense. So, <clears throat> Annie's. This is a honey mustard salad dressing. So what I do is I prepare my chicken. I usually will do some chicken breast. I get the breast and I slice it in half. And then I will get a, ooh, let me get my little um, brush thingy. Hold on. So I will get a little bowl. <clears throat> I have my little marinade brush put it inside, and I brush my chicken, okay? That's literally what I do. Or sometimes I'll just get like a plastic baggie and pour some, um, my salad dressing in there, and then I put the chicken in there and I zip it closed and then I shake it, shake it, shake it. But I don't really wanna do that anymore because I'm having a whole thing about using plastics right now. I am heavily concerned about plastics and using a lot of plastics. So I pretty much mostly stick with this, okay? Simple. So you could use, I use a honey mustard. This is another one that I like. Um, this is a creamy poppy seed cream craft. Okay. Um, another one, this is the one I'm going to try. It's another Annie's roasted red peppers. So basically it's kind of like, what am I in the mood for? Sometimes I use a salad dressing that is like olive oil based, uh, maybe or sometimes a little more creamy. It just depends on like my mood, okay? That is a really, really simple, like you could go to your kitchen right now and go look and see what salad dressings you have and you could literally do this hack like today or with the next time you cook, okay? Here's another one. Um, this is an old school like kind of seasoning I've used. This is a Bragg's Liquid Aminos. It kind of tastes like soy sauce a little bit. Um, and so it's like a soy sauce alternative. So I will just spray, sip, 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 spray my chicken. And I will, it depends on my mood. If I want something a little more Asian, if I was gonna do this, I would do chicken, maybe do some um, bell peppers. I could slice them, I could steam them. What I will probably do if I did this was I would pan fry my chicken or pan cook my chicken. And then I would put some bell peppers and just cook it alongside of it after it's cooked a little bit, not raw, but like halfway through when it's cooked more. Um, if I'm grilling, I would just do my chicken and then afterward, or I'd save a little bit of room for my bell peppers, okay? Um, here's uh, my favorite seasoning that I use for chicken. 
as you can see, um, I used almost all of it. I need to buy a new one, but it's Mrs. Dash. Mrs. Dash has been around forever. <laughs> Okay, and so I'm I'm a big Mrs. Dash fan, and it's basically like a seasoning blend. Okay, and um, this one is salt free. So my husband loves Mrs. Dash, and he's very very picky. Um, sometimes, like when I'm in a mood for spice, I love spicy foods personally. Um, I will tell you, like the honey roasted. Um, the honey mustard salad dressing, that's non-spice at all. Um, but I have some, and I've finished all of these. I bought these in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado, but I like to try to find like different spice blends. And so there's a couple that I have found that I've really, really enjoyed. Um, so if you're a spice lover and you want some options, this one's called um, Coyote Pass. And this one's called Grand Ground Devil's Back Bull Bone whoa <laughs> and it's definitely got a kick okay let me know and i'd be more than happy to pass these along to you but these are like what i like about these spices that they're like family owned um and it's like a little farm and it's a family that actually makes these particular spices so that's what i've got for you that's my simple hack it's like sometimes chicken can get really really boring i get it okay and a simple salad dressing can turn your chicken and take it to a whole other level. So what's your favorite chicken? <laughs> or what's your favorite salad dressing? You could even use Caesar salad. Sometimes I use a Caesar salad uh, dressing and I'll just brush it um, on the chicken as well. So that's another option. All right, be sure to let me know uh, what your, kind of where you're at nutrition wise. What are you interested in? What? How can I serve you? How can I what ideas would best help you where you are in your journey? If you have any health issues or health concerns, things that you're dealing with, let me know so that I can have some options that best serve where you are at. I'm super excited. I think I see that comment here, Wendy, to bring my A1C down. Got it. Okay. Gotcha. So if you're uh, working on your hemoglobin A1C, definitely... Um, I will do this in my next um, Sunday video because this is something I was talking to my husband about. Like, I don't want to just give you recipes, but I want to really help you with the nutrition side because I am a nutritionist by training. Um, as someone who is working on their sugar, his, the simplest answer I will tell you, Wendy, is you want to really have your plate, every time you eat, have balance okay and here's the balance that you want to look for there's the macronutrients these are the nutrients that our body needs we always need protein carbohydrates and fats okay so protein is really important if you are someone who is trying to bring your blood sugar down your hemoglobin a1c down you want to make sure and have protein on your plate why because protein doesn't convert into blood sugar okay protein will help your blood sugars i'm not talking about going like on a keto diet necessarily but i am saying you want to make sure and have protein at every meal so here's a question for you when you have breakfast where is your protein and that's what i train my clients in like when you have a plate, when you're serving yourself, you always wanna ask yourself, where is my protein? Where is my carbohydrate? And where is my fat? In my experience, most people don't have fats very much, but they're also very important for our health, es essential fats in particular. And then they tend to have um, either more carbohydrates and not enough protein. <laughs> So as a tip, for every meal, like lunch and dinner, your protein portion should be like the size of the palm of your hand, the roundness and the thickness, okay? So if you're, if you're watching this live or if you are on the replay and you want to talk more about, you know, lowering your sugars, let me know. Wendy, let me know if that was helpful, okay? Um, make sure to have protein at every meal that will help your hemoglobin A1C in lowering it. 
you want to have lean protein sources. What are lean protein sources? Things like chicken, turkey. The challenge with turkey is it's like, ugh, it doesn't taste really good. So that's where your seasonings really come in, okay? Uh, a tip for turkey cooking is you want to make sure and season it before you cook it, okay? And as you're cooking it, you know, turning it over, whatever you're doing with it, uh, make sure your seasonings are up because it'll really help with the flavor versus uh, seasoning your turkey after it's cooked, okay? That's a huge one for me. Um, so fish is a lean protein source, okay? So that's a simple something you could do like right away. And I will, now that I have your feedback, I will go to work at being very kind of diabetic friendly or not, not say you're diabetic, but lowering hemoglobin A1C. So let me see, I think I see another comment and then I'm going to start my own cooking offline. I want foods for gut health. Okay, awesome. So uh, for gut health, that's good. I will go to work on that. You wanna really look at, well, one thing for gut health that you may really wanna look at is um, fasting. Like, um, not for instance, not eating after 7 p.m., like between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. Like giving your gut time to not have any food. Because imagine when we don't eat, and especially overnight, there is so much repair work that the body is doing. And it's really important that the body be able to do that without like competition. What's the competition? Food. <laughs> If you can just let your gut rest, no food for 12 hours, even if you did that like three days a week, it will really make a difference with your gut health. That's just one little part of it, okay? And I wanna give you something you could actually go and do something with right now. Another thing you could do is be sure that you have like, three hours from your last meal before you go to bed, okay? Now, you may be like, the knees, that hard. Well, it just takes practice. <laughs> but you, I believe in you. You can totally do it. You just gotta plan, right? You gotta like think it through. Um, you know, a lot of people, they eat two hours or one hour before bed. And uh, from a gut standpoint, um, it's really not good for your gut your body's trying to process and do something with all that food and it's in sleep mode, you know? So those are two things you can do. Eat your last meal three hours before bed. And the second thing you can do for gut health is um, several days out of the week, 12 hours, like 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And it gives your gut some rest but i will also i've really been thinking about making um kimchi and actually teaching you guys how to make that kimchi is a fermented food which is really really good for your gut so we're gonna have more on gut health this year i'm really excited guys about 2020 because i'm i really my intention in 2020 is to create content that serves you and um health nutrition it what an amazing area to really serve you in and provide you with resources okay so until then if you're on the replay let me know you're watching the replay and please answer my questions how can i serve you what do you need right now in the area of your nutrition if you have health questions you can ask me that too if i know i'll answer if i don't i will tell you <laughs> so i look forward to just kind of this sunday routine that i'm about to get into until then bye